to, to be a good bear researcher is um, yeah to spend a lot of time on the field. Also a lot of time reading some papers, manuscripts about the bears, meeting a lot of people who are also have a similar interest, you know. Spending uh, most of your time <laughs> on bears. And then year by year, year by year, you, you know more. All in all, it's just you need to be persistent. My name is uh, Slaven Relic. I'm dealing with uh, large carnivores in Croatia and the surrounding countries. I'm in this work from like 2009, so like more than 10 years. Somehow I got hooked for, <laughs> for you know, for the large carnivores and for the bears especially, and that love stayed until today, yeah. <laughs> Bears and people in Croatia. <laughs> Through history there was always like interaction between bears and the, and the humans. There are conflicts with the locals, especially with the, with the um, shepherds who have sheep and uh, beehive owners. But uh, there is a compensation system uh, for the bear damages. Uh, local hunting right owners they are obliged to to compensate the damage because they are managing the the games and the brown bear is a game species in Croatia. But the main the main threats for bear in Croatia and this region is actually building infra infrastructures. Re recently it's very very actual to build uh, wind farms on the top of the hills. It's it's tricky to 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 know the real real effect of these wind farms. For example, for, for the wolves, is known the period of six, seven years, they don't actually use this, this uh, region where is the wind farm. And uh, for the bears, it's still not known, but could be, could be the same. Mm, there is poaching of bears to some extent. Just recently we find out that one of our bears was poached um, last year. I think even by the hunters, with which we have a quite good collaboration throughout the years, but yeah, they just did it. Oh, many things is <laughs> special about the bears, you know. Oof, yeah, first, I don't know, their appearance, they are the, the largest terrestrial mammal, you know, in Europe. And uh, all the animals, when they are puppies, you know, they look cuddly and cute, you know, and everything. But, but the bears, they grow up and they, they even still look cute and cuddly. <laughs> Not like all the other animals when they grow up, they are less less cute, you know. But the bears are still, you know, the round round face with the small ears above, you know, also round. Yeah, they're really really cute. You can study many things in the life of the bear. So the best thing is to to catch the bear and put the collar on the bear, uh, which is of course not really easy easy job to do with the bears. So this, this black box here, it's it's alarm system, uh, it's connected on GSM network and uh, there is a magnet on the, on the bottom and uh, when the bear is captured he's pulling these strings because they are attached to the, to the trap and then he pulled the magnet off and then we get the uh, text message and the call that something is in the trap, you know. And then we are running here. <laughs> <laughs> When you have a bear, you try to find out as much as much as you can about that, that bear and the population that lives in this region. Once when you catch the bear and put the, the collar, so you can get really insight in their daily activity. For example, if they are sleeping, in their, if they are walking, running, how they interact with the, with the human infrastructure, for example, some settlements, how big is their home ranges, 
The male bears have a, have a much, much bigger home range than a female bears. It can be double and the, in the, in the more. Also, when you have bear in hands, so you want to take some other, other samples that you can investigate. For example, we are taking the blood as one of the kind of most important sample. We were taking some nasal swabs to see if there is maybe some uh, traces of, of coronavirus there. Also taking the body measurements, um, yeah, to see some average size of the bears here, like average size for the female, for the male, taking the small tooth <laughs> to determine the age of the bear. And yeah, you try to find out as much as you can. When you do this uh, job year by year and uh, you're finding out more and more and more and then you can share even more knowledge and you can get more knowledge from other, other people and there is a really satisf satisfaction. And in all of that you need to find some balance and to have some private life as well, <laughs> which is sometimes hard and when the field work is uh, like long lasting and yeah. Here, like a year and a half ago, we, we adopted one a little dog. His, na his name is Piki. He's a really funny dog, actually. <laughs> the most funniest being in the world, but okay. He is old dog, like uh, he was 13 when we adopted him, now he's a 14 and we are taking him on, our, on all our field work and he's kind of enjoying it actually. He likes to drive in the car and the forest, you know, sometimes just sleeping, sometimes looking through window, you know, in the forest and <laughs> things. He even has some photos with some of the captured bears, you know. Yeah, not, not many dogs can say. <laughs> The future of bears, I think they have a good future here actually. Just after the Second World War, which is about 60 years ago, they were quite in the low numbers here, like uh, 50 to 80 was estimation of, of um, number of bears in Croatia, which is quite low. Nowadays it's like uh, 1,000, approximately 1,000 bears, probably even more. Nowadays, people want to preserve the bears somehow. They are, they are aware of their ecological, you know, function in the nature, uh, and they just want to have them in the in the forest. All in all, I think I think it's it's the bears have a good future here. Yeah, I think it's going in the in the good direction.